Good evening, everybody. This is the select board meeting of Tuesday, November 10th. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I would like to thank everyone who has been involved in our town elections since really the end of August. The town hall employees and all of the town departments who assisted the Westford Post Office. We'd like to thank you as well. Thank you to the Westford League of Women Voters who stepped up to help in the elections. To all of the election workers, thank all of you very much. Those who helped to sort the ballots, to count the ballots by mail, who worked on election day at the polls, who maintained safety protocol for themselves and for others, who counted the ba ballots that night, Thank you all very much. This couldn't have happened without you. A thank you to the Westford Police Department, who is there to lend a hand and also who monitors our elections. Thank you to the custodians at the five schools who kept the schools open and uh, safe. Thank you to Patty Doobie, under whose leadership and guidance coordinated and organized it all. And thank you to her staff in the town clerk's office, Andy Sherman, Alyssa Ingalls, and Marilyn Frank. Thanks to Ryan Copley and the Westford Cat and their staff for making tomorrow a remote Veterans Day, much like Memorial Day. They're going to really pull together a nice town-wide program in a difficult time. It's a joint meeting with the Permanent Town Building Committee to discuss possible changes to the design of 51 Main Street due to COVID-19 and the next steps on the project. We've met with our architect. The areas that they're focusing on are improved means of egress out of the building, touchless surfaces in the bathroom areas, eliminating things like air dryers. Mechanical systems are also being looked at as far as improving HVAC systems and also operable windows that would improve airflow. Uh, we also talked about improving the technology and things, areas like the, the, the meeting room so that we could continue with remote participation in a post-COVID world. We talked about, well, well, you know, should we look at reducing the space of this? Cramming 100 people into a, a meeting room right now would not be looked upon very favorably. You could still hold a fairly large meeting in a space of that, you know, of that size. It does allow for social distancing. The most recent cost estimate on the project is uh, 8.5 million. I understand that COVID is completely changing the way that we do business, but I also feel like COVID's not around forever. If we were to move to one of the one and a half story options or the one story option, we're defeating the purpose of bringing everyone together when I feel like so many departments are exploding out of their spaces. I'm not sure as a board we're ready to make any decisions. I think there are some other factors and considerations out there we need to think about. The joint meeting with the Energy Committee to discuss the special town meeting resolution of Article 14 and determine their capability to take on this initiative. Uh, before we made a decision as to whether we were going to constitute a new committee or a task force or bring this under the umbrella of the Energy Committee, we asked for some input. The Energy Committee did not reach a consensus. There is some additional information that we were hoping to get before we made a recommendation. The Energy Committee fully supports uh, the resolution. We believe that there is some activities required under the resolution that would be uh, additional for the the Energy Committee and challenging to do with our current staffing and bandwidth. We could increase the number of members. However, I would have concerns about regularly achieving quorum. So really, we were hoping to get some more information around some of the rules around subcommittees, task forces. We believe that the charter of the Energy Committee is not currently broad enough. It doesn't include the reduction of fossil fuels, the increasing of renewable energy, and the decreasing of our carbon Footprint. I think, in my opinion, we take the entry committee and rename it, recharter it, give us some new members, and we would, ex I think, expect that given the enthusiasm around this uh, resolution, that we'll have members who want to join, who will want to be active, and won't be a quorum problem. I kind of feel like we're swallowing an entire ocean, and I'd certainly love to know what the baseline of our town is and where the largest areas of opportunity are before we go off creating some committee that we don't even know what's necessarily where they're going to focus. When we refer to a baseline, that usually is done by a consultant, and unfortunately, it looks like there is no money. I feel that the first nine months is actually establishing that baseline, and the majority of the effort that we're talking about, doing that homework that some communities have utilized the consultant for, Energy Committee is concerned that we're going to be seen as that free consultant, and we may not be able to deliver that. I think we sort of have at least a game plan right now moving forward. We'll gather a little bit more information, and when we have that uh, information. We'll put this back on our agenda to continue the discussion. Community update on COVID-19 and the impacts on town operations. 
it's really pretty clear to everyone that a town meeting in March doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We should be looking at moving it out to late spring. I'm happy to have it in June if that's what the board wishes. You just need to direct us. The last Saturday in May is May 29th, and the first Saturday is June 5th. May 29th probably isn't good because that's Memorial Day weekend. There's a question out there, Andrea, about when WA graduation is. I just got a text that tells me that it's June 4th. Rain date, June 5th. It sounds like May 22nd or June 12th sound like your two best options. May 22nd, would that be Apple Blossom? I think we should go with the, with the 12th. I know school committee would prefer a later date. It doesn't appear that anything else is going on the weekend of the 12th, so why don't we schedule town meeting for June 12th? So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. Sure. Aye. Aye. Consider next steps following receipt of notice of intent to sell the property owned by Westford Riding Academy Trust located at 22 Griffin Road. We don't really have to do anything right now because of COVID. You know, our decision is based upon input from other boards. Coscom especially. May as well get the ball rolling and get their input. I think the Conservation Commission is planning to do that. We will get it out to the boards and committees and we'll wait for their input. Joint meeting with 12 North Main Street Task Force for an update on the 12 North Main Street Limited Structural Assessment Phase 2 Environmental Site Assessment and Cost Estimates for Demolition and or Further Stabilization of the Building. We're unable at this point to finalize that Phase 2 Site Assessment because we can't safely get the LSP into the building due to the deterioration of the building. The deadline for the expenditure of those funds is actually December 31st. It's unlikely that we could finish that work in that time frame. We're going to hopefully work with Brownfields to seek another extension, but we've already received one. The main concern from developers has been the unknown contamination at the site. And unfortunately, we're unable to confirm the contamination because we can't get into the building. The numbers on their face are, are going to look pretty dreary. They're not surprising. They're falling into the categories we've sort of always anticipated in terms of what it would cost to tear the building down. If 12 is torn down, that campus would lose the ability to develop 32,000 square feet of space. Those setbacks would disappear once the building came down. The task force met. Everybody unanimously voted to ask for the Hail Mary of the release of one more RFP. We need about 350000 more money to stabilize the building to continue the site assessment. I don't know what issuing another RFP is going to do with the current state that we're in. The building is in danger of collapse. It is not safe. I don't know why we would not do an RFP. You know, I don't know whose pockets we're going to get a million dollars in to demolish this thing without giving it at least another shot. I'll make a motion to issue this RFP. Second. Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Aye. We have a request to appoint Marco Lawler to the Agricultural Commission. So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. We have a request from the Permanent Town Building Committee to appoint the following. Scott Hazelton as Jim Zegowitz, Roberta McGuire as an alternate, and Chris Karpinski as an alternative member. So moved. Second. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Review House Bill number 4235, which is an act amending the charter of the town of Westford in preparation for the governor's support approval of the bill. And the bill is to change the name of the Board of Selectmen to the Select Board and also to change the language of our charter to be, make it inclusionary. So, so moved. moved. Second. Aye. Uh, yes. Aye. 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 We have a request to approve the annual nativity display on the town common. So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. We have executive session minutes from October 27, 2020 for approval, but not for release. So moved. Aye. Uh, yes. Aye. 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 Board reports and updates. Anita, I know you want to report on the first meeting of the DEI committee. Yeah, it went really well. Our first meeting was a lot of sort of foundational information about open meeting law, how to operate as a town committee, and also we reviewed some of the top interest areas. We did put forward the Indigenous Peoples Day ask from the town, and so that's something that they're going to be considering and ranking amongst all the other interest areas. Town Manager's report. I want to announce that the Recycling Commission received a Sustainable Materials Recovery Program grant and asked for your approval for two purchase orders, one for Stryker, for Lucas 3 Chest Compression Systems for the Fire Department, and Demoulis Market Gift Cards for Thanksgiving Holiday Basket, as requested by the Council on Aging. So moved. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Good night, Westford, and everybody stay safe.